Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1501, part two. Now we have a simple task. We want to be able to pull an item from a list given a row number. So I want to be able to type in row 14 and retrieve the item in row 14. Now I already shot this video and we learned the indirect function. But if we go over to the sheet 1501 part two, teammates Bill Sizzes and Pomusco said, hey, guess what? There's an easier way to do this. It's not necessarily that it's easier, but if you use the in, and notice when I type in, there's index and indirect. If you use indirect, it will solve this in a simple way, but that function is volatile, which means Anytime you do anything like enter data or insert a column, it will automatically update. Now, for a small workbook like this, it doesn't matter at all. But in larger Excel solutions where you have lots of data and lots of items and maybe lots of indirects, things can slow down. So Bill Sizzes and Pomusco said, hey, just use the other IN, the index. Because guess what? Index takes an array, those are the values to potentially look up, and then a row number. So watch this. We're going to go over to the sheet list one. I'm simply going to click on the B column. Notice up in the formula bar, index, the sheet name, and then the entire column reference. Now watch this. I'm going to cheat. I don't remember what cell the row number was in, so I'm going to type a comma over here on this sheet. And for row number, I'm simply going to type A1. Close parentheses and Enter. Now that's not what we want, F2. Double click that A1. And now I'm simply going to click on the 19. And when I hit Enter, there it is. In the 19th row is Yolanda. If I change this to 14 and Enter, instantly I get Tyrone. If we go look at the list, there it is. Tyrone's in the 14th row. Now notice this solution and the original question asked by Jim wasn't what's the relative position because Tyrone would be the fifth item. It was, hey, I need the actual row number. Now, let's go back over here. There is a good use for indirect. If we want to be able to select between list one, list two, and list three, then the indirect function can be of use. Let's try this. This is what we did last time. I want to go and get from list one the 19th row. So I go over to list one and select B19, up in the formula bar, we see our sheet reference syntax. List one, explanation point. That's the syntax that allows Excel to see that as a sheet reference rather than text. And then there's the cell reference. When I hit Enter, that gets me what I want. But of course, I want to be able to change this. So F2, just as we did last time, I need to convert this. All I really need to do is get rid of that 19, so I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to join it using the Join symbol, Shift 7, ampersand, and then click on that 19. Now, just as we saw last video, if I hit Enter, that is a name error, because guess what? When we use the ampersand, it converts the entire thing to text. And that is not in double quotes. In order for Excel to understand text that's supposed to be text, we have to put it in double quotes. Now, this is not quite what we want, but let's hit Enter and test it. Oh, well, that doesn't work either. Yes, that's where the indirect function comes in. That text represents a valid reference. And we need to convert it from text to a reference, so we use the indirect function. So there it is, indirect. And that's all it will do. It will take that text that represents a reference and convert it back to a reference. So if I type 14, boom, there it is. But now let's take this one step further because, yes, that right there, if it really was just on that sheet, we'd rather use index. But what if we have multiple sheets? Well, guess what? That little bit right there, we would like to link that to this dropdown over here. So if I put List three, list two, list one, it will automatically go to the right sheet. Now, guess what? This is going to be text, even though it's a cell reference I'm linking. And I need to enclose that single apostrophe with the double quotes, then join it to the cell reference, then join that 
to this text, which is going to need an extra double quote. So this is how I usually do it. I do double quote, ampersand, ampersand, double quote. Then I just click right in between, click on the cell reference. And that will do it. We're joining row number and whatever sheet name we want. Enter. Now if I select list three, it gives me Mariam. If I select list one, I'm back to Tyrone. List two, there's Kathleen. Hey, it's awesome to hang out on our online Excel team. Thanks to Bill Scissors and Pomusco for index. And of course, anytime we have a good use of constructing a text reference and need to convert it back to a reference, we can use indirect. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.